So you're thinking about moving to Michigan. Well, in this video, we wanna chat about the cost of living here in Michigan, and we're gonna do all that starting right now. Hello and welcome. My name is Matt Talbot. My team and I help people just like you every single day move to here to Michigan and we absolutely live for it. We literally get calls, texts, emails, messages, carrier pigeons, smoke signals, all sorts of stuff of people that want to move here from out of state or out of the country and we absolutely love it. So if you're interested in moving here to Michigan, please comment below, hit us with a DM or hit the calendar link here in YouTube and set up a consultation today. So you're thinking about moving to Michigan. That's awesome. Congratulations. It is an awesome place to live. Now, there's some pros and cons when it comes to the cost of living here in Michigan. So in this video, we're going to dive into some statistics I have here. We're going to dive a little bit deeper into the cost of living if you're thinking about different areas and different states and kind of see how Michigan compares with housing, cost of living, property taxes, and more. So we're going to dive right into that. Number one on our list is housing costs. So being a real estate agent here in Southeast Michigan, I have the most data on housing costs here in Southeast Michigan. And as of about mid-year 2023, the median home price, which is a better one to look at, is about $240,000. So on average here in Michigan, you're going to pay roughly about $240,000. Now, we want to compare that to some other states, which I have pulled up here. Um, the average cost across all states is about $435,000. So we are significantly less when it calls for the average house here in Southeast Michigan. That being said, there's a lot of different locations and areas and schools and communities and workplaces and stuff like that. So there's obviously a different variety depending on where you want to move here to Michigan, where your workplace is, what school district you want to be in, what your needs are, right? Um, in real estate, we always talk about our wants list and our needs list. And we always start with the needs list on our team. We want to determine what the needs list of our clients are and then jump into the wants list. And a lot of times that helps determine locationally. So I can't promise on, you know, I can't promise you're gonna buy a $250,000 house here and have your dream home. So it really sort of depends on what area and location you're looking for. Some other areas to note across the country, Hawaii, interesting fact, is the highest, about $835,000. Uh, so I, Hawaii is obviously an island. It's in the middle of the, the ocean, the Pacific Ocean, so it's very hard to get to. So it makes sense that it's the most expensive, but that's the highest, Hawaii at $835,000, according to our statistics. Th these data points we pulled from a few different sources. We can help source those. Again, might not be exact gold, for depending because what we found in our research as diving into this data, it sort of depends what source that you're looking at, what time period you're looking at and stuff like that. But this gives you a pretty good understanding. That's the goal of this video, at least. Uh, California is the second highest being at 684. It's not an island yet, but with the uh, with the whole uh, earthquake situations happening out there, it might be an island one day. Who knows? But California is second highest at 684. So if you're thinking about moving from California out west or Hawaii here to Michigan, um, that's a great opportunity to definitely save on the cost of your home. What's interesting is I looked at some data here in Southeast Michigan and just talking about the appreciation across the country, but definitely here in Southeast Michigan. Um, in 2017, five years back, the median sale price here in Southeast Michigan was about $147,000, $150,000. Now it's up to 240. So there's been a good amount of appreciation. And with where inventory's at, everyone keeps saying, I'm waiting for the housing market to crash. I'm waiting for things to kind of drastically change here. There's no inventory here in Michigan, at least currently. And so if we stay on that trend, a lot of people are working from home. A lot of people need more houses here in Michigan. If we stay on that trend, um, there's going to continue to be appreciation. So there's no inventory. Every listing, I have a listing that went live today. I think I have 75 showings on it this weekend. So you need an agent that can help you navigate through all that, that can help you determine the value in today's market, the projected value. Um, and an important question to always ask yourself, people are always worried about, are they overpaying or underpaying um, on a home? You're never going to time the market, okay? So the important thing to ask yourself always is, how long you plan on staying in that property? The answer is five plus years. You're never going to be able to time the market. So as your principal residence, a good rule of thumb is to buy and wait. You can always refi an interest rate and save down the road. Um, but that's generally a good rule of thumb. Number two on our list doesn't necessarily just pertain to here in Michigan. Um, across the country, we want to talk a little bit about renting versus buying. So these are very hard statistics to dive into, okay? Because there's a lot of variables. One variable to consider, a lot of the articles that I read into 
two. It says over the last three years, uh, rentals have actually gone up about 20% compared to buying. Now, when you look at national averages of renting compared to buying property, it's a hard statistic. The reason being is a lot of the rental costs in major cities and across the country and here in Michigan are in big, massive apartment complexes, right? Which really lowers the cost of living compared to if you were to rent a single family house compared to purchasing a single family house. So um, here in Michigan, from my experience, it is more expensive per month to rent a single family home. Like if you have the family and kids and you want a three, four bedroom home in a lot of the suburbs uh, here in Metro Detroit, it's going to be a more expensive to rent that property than it would be typically on a mortgage, even at a higher interest rate. Okay. Now more expensive is relative because although your monthly payment might be a little bit more because obviously the owner needs to roll a lot of stuff into that cost. Um, there's other, you know, costs outside of that, right? What is your rent? What, what are you getting taken care of when you're renting a house? What is your cost of living as far as, you know, utilities and as far as, you know, what is rolled into that, that lease? So a lot of times we're seeing that leases are more expensive. However, not everyone has the ability uh, in their current state to have the down payment on a home, to be able to deal with closing costs and all the expenses of purchasing a home, and then hopefully having an additional nest egg when they do purchase a home to be able to take care of it. So um, as a general rule, renting is more expensive here in Michigan, at least in my opinion. You know, additionally, what is your long-term ROI? So for people who don't know what ROI is, that's return on investment. That's a, a business term that we use quite a bit, but what is your long-term ROI? So as you pay into a payment every month, right? In the real estate world, if you purchase a house, a little part of that payment goes to your principal, okay? So every month you're building up principal, which is what we refer to as equity in this business, okay? So we're building up equity. So let's say you buy a house for, we'll use very easy numbers. Let's say you buy a house for $100, right? And each month your payment is $1.50. Well, you might get approximately 50 cents a month. So after three months, you have $1.50 in equity on that $100, $100 home. So you're slowly building up principal, which is wealth for you. Additionally, if in five years when you go to sell, not only have you built up that principal, but along the way, that house is now worth $105. So you have $5 in free money and the additional principal along the way, which becomes your current equity. So there's a reason why purchasing makes more sense. People are saying the interest rates are high and stuff like that. Again, if you plan on staying in a home for five, seven, 10 years plus, it's very, very, very unheard of to lose money off that investment. You can always rent that asset or home at the end of that term and be able to continue to move things along. So the question to always ask yourself is how long do I plan on being in this house? If I plan on moving to Michigan, let's say for a new job and it's a five year gig, no matter what, you're a professor or you're a medical student or what have you, and you're going to be here for at least five years plus, it makes sense to purchase if you can swing that because you're going to earn that principal. You're going to more often not have that appreciation along the way, and it'll be a good investment. So renting to buying is a no brainer in my opinion, more often than not. However, if people just give you that knee jerk answer, they're lying to you because you need to know how long you're staying in that property. If you are a medical resident and you move to town, you say, Hey Matt, I'm only going to be here for about a year and a half, two years. And I got to get out of here because I got another program back in California. You know, I'm not saying don't purchase a house because people have actually made a lot of money over the last couple years, purchasing homes and moving in a couple years. But I am saying, make sure you know what the outcome is. Make sure that's an asset or a property that you're able to rent down the road in the event that the market's not where you want it to be to be profitable. Number three on our list is state property tax. So I looked at a lot of different data points here. Um, this article posted by Rocket Mortgage is one way to look at it. It's states ranked by property tax. It's very recent. It's from a couple months back here in 2023. Number one on the list is Hawaii. And then you go down Alabama, Colorado, Louisiana, District of Columbia, South Carolina, Delaware, and you go all the way down here. And number 38 is Michigan when it comes to state ranks by property tax. So you're your property tax um, in Michigan is about 38, so we're on the better half if you're looking for less taxes here in Michigan, which is a good sign. I think bang for your buck, your property taxes aren't too crazy. A lot of people might think otherwise, but um, here in Michigan, according to this article, you're ranked about 38. So if you're thinking about a lot of different places, you're not on the way high end, you're not on the way low end, but you are leaning towards a more um, a, a less less expensive uh, property tans, uh, tax here in Michigan at being ranked about. 38 for that number. Number four on our list is utilities. So this is a big one for a lot of people, right? They move to town and they're looking at homes. And a lot of times we get asked, you know, what are the utility bills? What, what is everything going to cost me here? So I found an interesting article that rolled all this into one here. Okay. And what that article says, the average monthly cost of utilities, including electric, gas, water, internet,
internet and phone bill, okay? I don't want to just give you your gas and electric bill. I kind of want to roll all that in. What is the total package in utilities compared to the rest of the country? So I really like this number as an aggregate as you're moving here to Michigan. It makes a lot of sense to pay attention to this type of number, right? And so utilities of, again, electric, gas, water, internet, phone, streaming services. Okay, so your internet and stuff like that is all included in here. So it's a cool number to pay attention to. On average, you're about $370 in Michigan. That's all rolled in. So that's not just gas and electric. That's your internet, cable, and all that stuff all, all rolled in. is about $370 in Michigan. The average cost in the United States is roughly $550. So $370, $470. was $180, bucks, right? So $180 less here in Michigan than on average across the country. So if you want to pencil scratch what your current utilities are and compare that to a $370 uh, price point here in Michigan, on average, that's what your approximate savings or uh, addition would be depending on where you're moving from. Um, like I said, that puts Michigan in the middle of the list for utility cross, uh, costs across the U.S. as well, too. So we have that known here. It's right about in the middle when it comes to where your utilities should be in the United States here. So um, again, important numbers to, to figure out. What I found is for the most part with a lot of these numbers, Michigan isn't on the extreme end of the high or low end or liberal or conservative, however you want to look at it. We're, we're a lot of times right in the middle of the pack or maybe leaning one way or the other, which in my opinion um, is not a bad place to be as a state. Uh, because people are moving from all over the country, all over the world, and having that where there's not going to be a drastic change in any of their environment, depending on where they're moving from. Some places there might be a drastic change in some of these costs, but there's not a drastic change for the most part. That's a great sign if you want to move here to the great, beautiful state of Michigan. Number five on our list today is the boo, negative, no good, boring, not super stoked to talk about it. And that's our car insurance in Michigan. So Michigan's car insurance is one of the higher uh, categories here where we do lean towards the most expensive or on the more expensive side here in the country. And there's a reason for that. We have um, what's called no fault insurance. So some of you might know about this depending on your state. You may have it, you might not have it. But when you have no fault insurance, what that means is, is the insurance company pays out no matter who's at fault. So if I'm driving down the road and I'm not paying any attention and I'm over here texting and eating a McDonald's cheeseburger, I don't eat fast food, but I'm eating a McDonald's cheeseburger, I'm texting, I'm not paying attention. If I were here and Nick behind me here uh, operating the camera, what the insurance company says is there's there's no fault. So, you know, typically in a lot of states, I would be at fault. And so the, the insurance would only have to pay out in that case. But uh, the fact that there's no fault, both insurance companies should have to pay out, which increases the cost. This is a debate in Michigan. There's a lot of back and forth on this. There's a lot of dialogue around Michigan uh, car insurance specifically because of this no fault insurance. So because of this no fault insurance here in Michigan, Michigan residents have to pay what's called a PIP insurance. It's a personal injury protection insurance. Okay. And so because, like I said, insurance companies pay out, um, you have to cover yourself. Additionally, and this is a value add to our insurance being more expensive, people never want us to pay more expensive for car insurance. They look at it, they, they check the box, and they're done with it, right? But one of the value adds here in Michigan is for the term of your injury. If you're in an accident, it is covered. So here in Michigan, it, that's that's the law. You're, you're uh, covered no matter what happens to in that injury until you're through that injury. So there's some pros of your insurance being more expensive from a car insurance insurance perspective you know also there's some other variables one thing here in Michigan I cannot promise you're gonna love the roads at least here in southeast Michigan the roads get pretty bad in the winter okay so we have what's called uh, ice when things melt uh, the ice expands when it refreezes right and it creates these horrible piles I mean like really 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 bad potholes at times so the roads here in southeast Michigan are horrible they're terrible I think that also adds to the car insurance we also have snow here in Michigan and sometimes we get a lot of it and I don't know if you're moving from Texas or uh, someplace like Florida or something when you get like a dusting of snow like, like to us like even like an inch or two is like a dusting of snow it's not a lot right it's like a little bit of snow here like I've been down in Dallas they shut down the whole the whole the whole city right there's, there's no one's going to work no one's going to school it's all shut down here in Michigan like you'd be considered kind of a little bit of a pansy if you can't go to work when there's like a, an inch or two of snow right sometimes we get five six ten ten inches plus of snow right so uh, because of the snow um, that also adds to the insurance cost as well too a uh, buddy of mine, one of my one of my best friends, actually owes a body shop here at the local in Southeast Michigan. He calls snow white gold, right? Every time it snows, he's going to get busy. It's just inevitable. You're slipping and sliding all over the road. You got to be careful. Most people, you know, pick up on driving in the snow pretty quick if you're not used to it. It's not the hardest thing in the world, 
but there is a little bit of testing. So if you move to the state and you haven't driven in the snow, the first time it snows really hard, I recommend going to like a big vacant parking lot. Okay, maybe have someone drive you there and go ahead and drive around a little bit. Figure out how, how to drift and stuff like that. Like one thing you do when you're driving in the snow is never slam on the brakes, okay? The brakes really can kind of lock up or even with anti-lock, you can start sliding. A lot of times what you want to do is straighten your car in the snow so you actually hit the accelerator. So there's some tricks that us people, uh, us Michiganderians uh, in Michigan here, that's like way off, uh, in Michigan here, learn how to drive in the snow. So because of that, our insurance is high. Car insurance is very high here in Michigan. We do have the no fault state. There's some different um, litigation going through and different stuff going through the state of Michigan to hopefully kind of change that. There's actually been some recent adjustments that went down a little bit. And so we're in a snowy state. We're in a no fault state. The, the, the roads are horrible when it comes to potholes. That's going to be an expensive cost here in Michigan. Number six on our list is state income tax. So the state income tax is just over 4% here in Michigan. So as a state, right, because we're talking about the whole state of Michigan today, you pay just over 4% on your income tax, that version of your tax bracket. That ranks us about 38th in the country. So the state income tax, again, is not horrible. It's not by any means the least expensive, but it's not horrible. Puts us at about 38 in the United States, state income tax. Okay, coming in at number seven on our list of cost of living stuff here in Michigan is the state tuition for college, okay? So some interesting stats I have here. The average annual in-state college tuition in Michigan was $15,636 from 21 to 2022 academic year. Interesting fact. Um, that is $506 higher than the average. So we're right about average when it comes to state tuition, okay? Um, that ranks Michigan in the middle of the pack. It's 22 most expensive to be exact. So we're 22 most expensive out of the 50 states as far as the in-state college tuition here in Michigan. So there's some really good schools in Michigan for those of you who don't know. Um, one of the most uh, uh, popular, there's two really popular uh, universities here in Michigan. You have the University of Michigan in Ann Arbor and you have Michigan State, the city of Lansing, our, our capital here. And so um, in Michigan, it's a very big rivalry. Michigan, Michigan State. Who are you rooting for? You even see flags where it says a split household, right? Half will be Michigan, half will be Michigan, Michigan State. So depending on who you root for is a big thing here in Michigan. Now, who does everyone hate? is Ohio State. Here in Michigan, if you're from Ohio, if you went to Ohio State, it is a it is a uh, absolute sin here in Michigan to even mention that. I have some cousins and stuff. I don't really talk to those guys that much. No, I'm kidding. Uh, um, we have I have some family that went to Ohio State, but it's a huge rivalry. So Michigan, University of Michigan football in Ohio State is one of the biggest college rivalry games in the country, right? It's big here in the Midwest, but Michigan, Michigan State is the biggest rivalry. And for those of you who don't know, I'm a Bronco, so it's a great day to be a Bronco. That's Western Michigan University as well. So on average, 15000 or so in Michigan. We're ranked 22 most expensive, but we have some really good universities. There's a lot I didn't mention as well, too. Obviously, U of M is a great one. Um, Wayne State University has a great medical program, uh, law school there. I mean, across across the country, go way up to the UP. I was just in Marquette uh, a couple days ago, and you start going up to the UP, go past Marquette, and you have uh, Michigan Tech, awesome engineering school. I mean, there's some really, really good schools. Out in Kalamazoo, where I went to Western Michigan's a good school. They have K College. I mean, there's there's a lot of really good schools here in Michigan. So a lot of people move to the state for that reason, and that's I think one of the reasons why the tuition is a little bit more expensive because there's some great options here when it comes to colleges. Number eight on our list of cost of living here in Michigan is healthcare. That's a very very important piece, especially where we're sort of at in society, right? Baby boomers, massive generation, right? A lot of these people are getting to the age where the healthcare is going to be a lot more important as they age over the next few years so a lot of people are thinking about that specifically here in Michigan with the baby boomers we have what's called snowbirds for those of you who don't know a snowbird is somebody that leaves during the snow they fly south okay so um, health care in Michigan is actually the least expensive in the country on average 350 bucks a month the national average for health care is 452 dollars um, and so I attribute that to one thing I don't know this is not a statistic by any means I'm making this up off the top of my head but there is a lot of big hospitals here in Michigan. So you have University of Michigan healthcare system. So University of Michigan between the healthcare system and the university for a long time was the biggest um, employer in the state. I mean, it's a massive organization. Downtown Detroit has Henry Ford uh, Hospital. They have D, uh, they have DMC. They have Sinai Grace. That's another DMC hospital. There is, what am I missing? Beaumont, huge hospital system. They're, they're constantly getting acquired and changing names and stuff like that. 
there's a lot of really big hospital systems, developed hospital systems here in Southeast Michigan and even more across the state. There's some big ones in Grand Rapids and even big hospitals in Traverse City and throughout the state, but definitely here in Southeast Michigan, it's a very known thing. There's lots and lots of hospitals. Why? There's about 5 million people in the Southeast Michigan. They call it Detroit metro area. So Detroit itself is still under a million people. I think it's seven, 800,000 last I checked roughly as far as population. But when you look at Detroit metro and you go to the surrounding suburbs, which we call Southeast Michigan or Metro Detroit, right? There's about 5 million people. So there's a good amount of people in the general area, which means you need a lot of hospitals. Um, through the years, I've been very fortunate to work with a lot of people in the medical community. So if you're moving to Michigan and you're going to medical school or you're going to being a resident or you're getting your full-time job, congratulations after a lot of a lot of hard work for a lot of years. We've had the privilege of working with a lot of people in the medical profession, especially doctors and physicians. Um, doctors and physicians is the same word for the record, but especially docs and physicians, right? We work very heavily with physician programs and are able to understand their world. So we have tons of references there um, when it comes to those physician programs or 0% down programs, some really good finance and we have the best people in the state without a doubt that we can put you in touch with that helps you through those loans and can be very, very creative for you and your family. A lot of times docs, as you guys know, if you are doctors, um, husband and wife or partners, they uh, a lot of times they find their significant other throughout school. So they move and they need to match in certain areas. And sometimes we'll have like the husband working downtown Detroit and then the wife working in uh, University of Michigan. So helping find and define the right areas that might make sense for them for their commutes and stuff like that is a awesome, awesome feeling because I have a lot of empathy for people in the medical community. It's almost like Hogwarts to me. It's very, very above my head. Like these people are very, very smart. They put a lot of work in to get to this point. So if they're moving to Michigan for residency or for Wayne State's medical school or for, you know, their fellowship or their final destination, so to speak, of where they're going to be working, um, you know, we really, really appreciate working with people in the medical community as well as nurses and anyone else in the hospitals as well too. So if you are thinking about moving because of healthcare, uh, it's very inexpensive here in the state. There's a lot of really great doctors, a lot of um, really great people from all over the country and the world moving here to work in our hospital systems. So here in Michigan, overall, we have a relatively low cost of living. At least we hover in the middle of most categories. We're on the way low end in some, and we are a little bit higher on the uh, uh, car insurance end of things. But for the most part, we really hover in a really great price point when it comes to cost of living in my opinion. Michigan has so much to offer. You can live here in Southeast Michigan. You can live in the Grand Rapids area on the west side of the state and throughout the Lower Peninsula and Upper Peninsula. There's so many things to do and travel and explore. Check out our other videos for that. Like I just got back from the UP. Pictured Rocks, Marquette. I mean it's just beautiful up there. It's like a whole different world and that's all part of the great state of Michigan. We have the Great Lakes. We have so many things going on. A lot of people moving to the area. Like I mentioned earlier a lot of doctors and physicians and, and dentists and stuff moving to the area to work on their residency, to work on their craft, to build their careers. Um, the auto industry is huge. We work with a lot of engineers from literally all over the world that are moving to Michigan, Mexico, overseas, everywhere, right? So we work really, really heavily with people that are moving here to the great industries that we have to offer when it comes to automobiles and healthcare and some of the innovation. Now we're getting electric cars and stuff like that. So it's really fun to be a part of this. And if you are thinking about moving to the area and you want more information and you're just curious or just want to set up a conversation, hit that Calendly link, like I said earlier, set up a consultation with our team. Of course, 100% free of charge. If you like what we see, we're happy to help you out. We serve hundreds of people every year moving here to Michigan. And like I said, we absolutely live for it. So if this video provided any value, if you're thinking about moving here to the great state of Michigan, please comment below, send us a direct message. Definitely hit follow and tap for notifications for more videos just like this. I'm Matt Talbot with Living in Detroit and the Talbot team here in Southeast Michigan. Thanks so much for watching our video.